us to vi visit my folks. Um, Patsy uh, was on, was a bottle on a bottle, so my dad, or my husband, uh, Lori fixed a, a soup. It was a tomato soup can, wired it around something in the engine, and uh, we drove fifteen miles, and it was just right for her to drink. Oh, he was using the engine to heat up the milk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. that's very clever. Yeah, I thought so. We're gonna no. All right, hold on. I have my timeline here again. So you were married in 1942 mm -hmm. in July. Mm -hmm. What was what day was it? 25th. 25th of July. Okay. Mm -hmm. I had written that down, but it was so sloppy I couldn't read it. <laughs> um, he so, got his wings there. We were married in Houston, and he got Houston. his wings, and. Um, he was, we were transferred to Sacramento okay. so he could learn how to fly a B-13 B from the back seat okay. because the, stu the instructor was in the back seat. Right. And then we, we were there, I think, a month, and then we went to Merced. We were there a year, and then he got orders to go to New Mexico, Roswell, and became an instructor of B-17s, and then when the 29s came out, he was an instructor for them. Okay, so when was Pat born? December 28th, 1943. December what? Hmm? December what? December 8th, uh, 28th. December 28th of 43. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, and so at that time you're living in Roswell? Uh, yeah. Okay. She and Janice were both born in Roswell. Okay. And my grandfather is teaching pilots how to fly bomber planes. Mm hmm So how long were you in Roswell then? Till the war, after the war, till after the war. I oh, mean, so you spent we, a couple years there then. Oh, yeah. Okay. Was Tom born in Roswell? No, he was born in Elmhurst. Okay. Now, my mother was born in 45. Mm -hmm. What year was Tom born? 47. 47, okay. January 47. Oh, January. 11th. Okay. Um, now, I have to ask this because it's a pop culture nerd thing, mm -hmm. but did Area 51 exist in Roswell at this time, and did you know anything about it? Did it what? Area 51. Area Area 51 is an Air Force or military base in Roswell, New Mexico. And the reason why it's known is because sometime in the mid-40s, it was reported that a UFO crashed, and that was the Air Force base that took the crashed aliens. There was only one uh, <laughs> field which they built, It was, uh, and they had to put the houses up and everything. Hmm. There was no airport there. Okay. So it would have to have been when it, the war was over and everything was deserted. But okay. uh, that's a bunch of baloney. <laughs> I'm sure it is. It's just that's the only reason that it, Air Force it, Base it is known. It had to be after the war. Okay. Because so. they would have known about it. Okay. I don't remember what year it was. I just remember I, I think it was sometime in the 40s, but just... It had to be probably in the 50s because... Uh, they they had it. The, the, they were taking different things down and, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It had to be deserted. Okay. There's, there's like a million people on the Internet right now, like literally at least a million, who have, have signed up saying they are going to storm the base at Roswell to, like, force the government to show us the aliens. <laughs> now, 99.9% .9 of them are just geeks on the Internet who are, have no intention of going to Roswell. But... Some people out there probably really think that there's they, a collection. Oh, gosh. So sometime this month they're supposed to do that. Good. And I'm thinking, okay, number one, the military has guns. You don't want to storm a desert base because you're well, going to be running it's, through it's three miles deserted. of desert. It's deserted. It's well, deserted. It, there's it, no military there anymore. It, it could be. I don't know. But also they've given them more than a month of warning. I tell now, you If you what. had something to hide and someone said, in a month I'm going to come and make you show it to me, wouldn't you move it? Well, they have... <laughs> <laughs> they said they have uh, a, ge a guest, uh, different things, pieces of the of the w wing and everything. 
I think they did that as a tourist thing. After all, sure. the army left, and they didn't have the money that they had. Oh, before. so you think it was like the Roswell Business District sure. came up with that? I think that's what it was. That's I very mean, clever. this is me talking. Well, you lived there because you it know. was. It's a town way out in the desert. Uh huh. And the the fact is, with the, they had German prisoners, which were on our base, doing Yolande and could doing the cooking and stuff. When they took them back to their camp. They only had a few fellows because where are they going to run to? There's no place to run. It's true. Because it's all, they took them deeper into the, that's where their base was, deeper into the uh, the desert. You had, and, uh, wait, you had German prisoners mm-hmm. on the base at Roswell? Mm-hmm. Why? Mm-hmm. Well, they did the lawn, and we, the cooks were very good. Well, but, I mean, they were taken from Europe to the United States. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. They were on several camps. Was that a normal thing? Probably. Okay. I just they had them on uh, ca- camps in um, Canada, too. Really? Yeah. I didn't we, know that. We weren't supposed to talk to them, but we did. <laughs> yeah. I just sort of assumed that since, you know, France and England were part of the war effort, that if you took German prisoners, you would leave them in Europe instead of across no. the ocean. But No. In fact, is several of them. Uh, they were um, t- uh, treated mean or anything, you know, and they got good food. And uh, once was a graduate of Columbia College in New York. I don't know where that is. Another one was had came over, and he was at, what college was it? It's another one in New York. I don't know where it was. Then they went back to Germany. Okay. And they said, uh, they both, I talked to, to one, and he, he was going to be a school teacher in Germany. And um, I, he said, then Nazis, he says, I would never go back. And I said, do you have folks or relatives? He says, no, my folks are dead. And um, he says, I'm not going back. Huh. And so many made their homes that, in Canada the same thing. They stayed. So. All right, well, that's yeah. good. That's interesting. Yeah. And they were glad they were out. Well, I was told stories, I don't know, that a lot of, well, I think you know this, a lot of them did want to fight, so when they saw the Americans, they just... Oh, yeah. Right, right. They dropped we, their we guns, and that was it. some prisoners at a time. Yeah. They, they yeah, they, did, they knew they were licked. Yeah. Huh. So, they, yeah. they were glad they been caught, were captured. <clears throat> So. Well, there was no point in it. They, so were you were you in Europe during the war? No. He was, oh, I, he was. He yeah, was. Yeah, I, was yeah. I was thinking of Sorry, war. No, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. you were in Roswell. Yeah. He was a, a mis- uh, I chaplain. Was, I was with the Fifth Army. Fifth Army. Oh, you were a chaplain. You weren't a soldier. No. Oh. Okay, but well. you were still, I mean, yeah, you were there, so oh, praise boy. the Lord and pass the ammunition. Right? Oh, boy. <laughs> when you read his book, you'll it, it's in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm showing up tomorrow, so I'm going to read about that, and then yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. want to hear about some of that from you. Yeah. So you were stateside the whole time, though. Now, yeah. Grandpa's brother... Uh, Gil? One of them went to the South Pacific. No. Right? Gil's brother, Gil... No, he was in Europe. Gil was in Europe. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, it's, it's, the brothers are Gil and Roy? Uh, no, Ray, Ray. Raymond. Raymond wasn't in the at all. He enlisted, and DuPont needed chemistry, the fellows in chemistry for different we, the weapons and things they were, lo- they were work, working on. Okay, he was the chemist. And he was the chemist. Okay. And so the DuPont took him back. They, they could not go. Okay. And, um, but Gil so, wound up. But Gil did. But th- th- everybody wanted, all the men wanted to be in the service. There was a waiting list. He waited six months to go into the Air Force. In the meantime, they were in San Francisco. We were in, in Merced. That's 150 miles. And they would come up every weekend. They leave Friday night and get in at midnight. And. Um, after work, and then Laurie would take him out to the field because he was waiting to get in. He had a 
tag or something that showed he could, and taught him how to fly. He didn't know how to fly. Oh, wow. And um, so he taught him in the B-13, and then uh, he was stationed when he got in in Utah, and they flew Cubs. And Lori, one weekend, he went to see him, And uh, he said when, when he, he was a cadet then, Gil was, and so when he saw his brother, he saluted. And <laughs> Gil says, cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> so when he was sent over, what did he do? He Gil, was a I mean. B-25 uh, pilot, and he flew first in Africa. Oh, and okay. um, then he was sent to England or to uh, Italy. There was a base in Italy, and he and then he bombed uh, Hungary, and uh, all in through there. Oh yeah. wow! Okay. Mm-hmm. Huh? Yeah. <coughs> bases in Italy. I was familiar with them. Hmm. Yeah. I was familiar with the stuff in Italy. Yeah, yeah, because you were you were in uh, Italy. Yeah. What you did? Did you see that Air Force Base wherever yeah. it was? Yeah, I have I have it vaguely in my mind. Yeah. The name of it. He brought uh, pretty clothes from. J- oh, he was in Japan for an R and R after the war. Oh, after the war, okay. And um, he brought some pretty gowns for Virginia, and then in Italy they have cameos. Yeah. And so he brought, I don't know how, a handful of them, because they were cheap, and uh, the fellas needed yeah, the, the guys, money. the guys were faking those, too. There were a lot of fakes. Probably, yeah, probably. <laughs> they were selling fakes. Always take yeah. advantage of the tourists. <laughs> so, I didn't, I saw a couple of them. They, they were very pretty, but, uh, <clears throat> so. All right. Well, uh, <clears throat> let me start with, uh, so the beginning here, so. Pat and Jan were both born in Roswell, mm-hmm. and then Tom was born in '47. So when he did was you? In Elmhurst. So when did you leave Roswell? Well, let's see. Um, he had to wait. You know, they take when how long you've been in the service. He got out in '47 um, or four, four. I guess it was '48. How old was Patsy? I could go by the ages. Oh, 47. Pat was born in 43. Yeah, that was 47. And um, we went to Dallas looking for a house. My folks were there. And uh, we didn't like Dallas. So we finished SMU. One, one, uh, it was just one semester. Um, and then we came back. Wait, where's and, where's uh, SMU? We came back to... Uh, what? SMU? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where's that? Uh, um, Southern Methodist. Methodist University. Yeah. Southern Methodist. It's, where is yeah, that? Southern Methodist. Is it's that in, in Texas? It's yeah. in Dallas. Okay. That's where he went. Then he came back and he went to, North, he wanted to be a Northwestern. That was filled. And he tried, I think, about six different colleges filled. So someone said, well, if you want engineering, how about Bradley? And that's in Peoria. So he, uh, he got there, and they had they were building trailers, you know, and uh, so they had it, and um, that's where he he finished. He graduated from there, with honors. All right. Uh, so wait a minute. When did you live in Peoria? Was that before Elmhurst? Like you went? Oh from, yeah, yeah. So you went from Roswell to Peoria to Elmhurst. Uh, yeah. I got that right? Okay. Mm-hmm. And when he were, graduated from uh, college, then we went back to Elmhurst. So he went to Bradley to finish his degree in architecture? In, um, he was going to be an aeronautical engineer, but he had so much flying that he just came, became a general engineer and then branched off into stre- uh, stretchical. And um, he was... Uh, and let's see, and when we came back, we lived in Livingston. We bought a house there, lived there, and, what, and then we decided he drew up the plans for our house. Mm-hmm. And um, we were our own contractor. He did all that. And uh, so that was it. Oh. Okay. Wait, so he went to school to work on designing and building airplanes. Is yeah. that right? Mm-hmm. 
He had he? two years at Iowa State. Right. And uh, then the war broke out, and he quit college and joined right away because he didn't want to be drafted. Right. Because he knew how to fly. So uh, December 7th was Pearl Harbor, and uh, that was a Sunday. And he either went Monday or Tuesday and enlisted. <clears throat> okay, so after... After the war, he went to Bradley in Peoria mm -hmm. and finished his degree. Mm -hmm. So did he wind up actually designing and building airplanes? No. So no. He, uh, he did structural work on uh, walking drag lines. For mining. For mining. In other words, instead of having a mine to go underground, they have these huge, huge... They're, they're, they buy them by yards, 25-yard mm -hmm. buckets and stuff. And then they dig, and they and then go down where there's where a, whatever they're looking for. Oh, so yeah, he designed. Yeah. So hmm? he designed their drag lines. Yeah, their drag lines, walking drag lines. So he designed those. Mm hmm Okay, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah. I just, I I always thought that he was just an architect. No. Nope. Was he ever an architect? No. Nope. Why did I think he was an architect? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. He was an engineer. So, well, who it. am I thinking of? Well, architect. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's a good thing I'm here asking these questions. Apparently I'm confused about a lot of stuff. <laughs> mm. All right. We got another ten minutes. So, um, do you have any interesting stories about the girls when they were small? Pat and Jan. They cut each cut each us uh, each other's hair. <laughs> it's tradition. When did they do this? I don't know how old they were. Now we were living in Yorkfield, and um, then uh, then let's see. When did they? She dyed her hair. Patsy dyed her hair blonde. Oh and, yeah. You know she was very dark skinned. She olive skinned like mm -hmm. I had. I used to have be dark skinned. They took me for a Mexican, really? and um, let me think. She one day she dyed her hair, and I made a mistake when she came down as laughing, and uh, I I just I mean it, it was just so funny. <laughs> she has this natural curly hair, uh -huh. and and she's a blonde, and, and it just didn't fit with her complexions and things. And she said she ran upstairs. And a little, I don't know how she removed it. I, I don't know anything about things like that. And, uh, she's, and she told me when she grew up, she said, you know, you hurt my feelings when you laughed. And I said, when did I laugh? And she told me the story then. I said, well, you look so funny. <laughs> and I said, I couldn't help it. Uh, now, now she's getting long, has long hair. Uh, and she came from the first time she came here, I said, you know, I really didn't know you with that long hair. It's made, you're much older. And so when she comes now, she puts it up in a bun. <laughs> oh. But I said, does, Rich, does Richard like that long hair? She says, yeah, he likes it. Well, there you go. And I says, well, then keep it that way. There you go. <laughs> Gosh. But she looks good in very short hair. So. Now, what were they like as, as small little children? Like my daughter, if I can brag for a second, my daughter could read at the age of like two. Mm -hmm. And when she was three, she was able to like start reading books. Of course, little toddler yeah. books, small words, but she could do it. You know, so she was always very, very smart yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Um, so were they... Like, were they readers? Did they like books? They liked books, yes. Then Janice had uh, rheumatic fever, and she was in bed for a year and a half. That Whoa. was junior high school. Oh. She, then she have, they have a tutor, you know, that comes. Okay. And your taxes pay for that. And um, so then she went back the, for the second semester in eighth grade, because she graduated with the eighth grades. Yeah. And then she went to... Um, York, and the doctor said she can't have um, gym because of the, she had it inside, huh. and um, he didn't want her to exert herself. 
And so uh, when then when she, I think it was her sophomore year, he said, you're, you're okay, you're free now. And so um, <laughs> she uh, took her a slip from him with permission to go into gym and gave it to the nurse. And, and, and she says, uh, do I tell the gym teacher? She says, no, I do that. And so she went, and the uh, the gym class was, I don't remember now how this was. She'd have to tell you. Um, she grabbed her out of the line. Well, you're supposed to be in gym. And uh, she says, no, no. She says, I've been changed now. And uh, so I might have this wrong. You have to ask her. And so... Uh, she started to cry, and Patsy came along and stopped, got out of line at this, to comfort her sister. So anyways, oh, she, uh, and so I went to school mm. after I calmed down. <laughs> and I asked to see this teacher. And I looked at her, and I thought, gee, she looks familiar. And I didn't recognize the name. And so uh, the... Um, she said that, uh, oh, then the, the, the why they're waiting for her, she says, she is just sweetest and the kindest gym teacher. She said she would never do anything like that. And if she did, it, we, she'll apologize. So she came in, and I kept thinking, boy, I've seen her. Then all of a sudden, it dawned on me. I said, what was your single name? When you before you were married, she told me, she says, I had you as a gym teacher. And I said, do you remember the time that Rita Carmen did something you didn't like and you shook her till all her, pan, her hairpins fell out of her hair? I didn't do that. I said, oh, yes, you did. And I, and, uh, I said, and I'm the one that you bawled out for getting the, by the kids to play a basketball with two courts. And she said, Betty? I said, yes. <laughs> She says, oh, my goodness. And she says, well, so then I turned to the other, and you said she didn't do anything, and she was kind and sweet. I, I should not do that. I should, <laughs> But I just carried away. And uh, so anyway, she, I said, I want you to apologize. And she said, I, I intend to. And uh, so she did to Jan, because Jan was just like this when she came home. And you can imagine after being in bed for six, you know, and just graduating. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, everything was all right. But it's funny. And I knew Miss Lesway, her and I didn't know her married name. Patsy had her for sewing, which I had her for sewing. I was left handed. Mm. So she starts me, she says, Do you take it? She goes like this. And so I just turned it around. And start. She's what are you doing? And I'll never forget that. She grabbed it out of my hand and she said, "You, what are you doing?" I said, "I'm left-handed. I have to do this." Well, I don't. I can't teach you. That, now that that I can remember that. So I reminded her of that too when I went to school. I had a horrible <laughs> time in school. And, uh, Apparently, there's a, a few darker oh, days. Gee, I can remember that, and. Uh, so I, I, I had learned to turn things around when you're left-handed. Sure. And, or to turn, to sit opposite you uh -huh. to get it. And because uh, I learned to knit that way you know, with my mother. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to learn, I learned needlepoint. So I went to the fields. They were teaching that. And I said, she said, come sit beside me. I said, no, I'd rather sit here. I didn't want to tell her because they go berserk when you say you're left-handed. So I, I watched her, and she said, I'd like you to try it. Now I said, oh, no. I said, no, I, I, uh, I get it. I know, I know what you're doing now. It's all right. She said, no, try it. Try it now. <sighs> so I said, I'm left-handed, and I'll do it the other way. So I turned it opposite. And she said, well, that's wonderful. She says, if I have any left-handers, I'll tell them the same thing. I thought, oh, thank heaven, someone <laughs> understands. This was at Fields. They used to teach this. Right. So. Yeah, they were nitwits. There you oh, go. Yeah. 
See? Well, you know, Full what circle. it does is make you feel like an odd person. A lot of people, a lot of, a lot of people don't know how to be a good teacher. No. And instead they sure of don't. figuring out how to solve the problem, they yeah. just blame the kid for it and move on. I, I, why is it you remember the bad things instead of the good things? I don't know. Because I had, I must have had fun in school. Oh sure. But, but uh, yeah, the emotionally scarring things are the things that last. Oh. But that's normal and un- unfortunate. And, uh, wait, the trouble is, you you think. Boy, I, I'm left-handed. I'm an oddball. You know, that's what you're thinking all the time. Well, to get treated like that, yeah. Oh, I'll never forget that. So when I watched my kids, I was hoping none would be left-handed. <laughs> none of them were, thank heavens. Okay. But um, uh, Aaron is ambidextrous. Yeah. He can use either hand. And he can write with either hand. Yeah, I find that amazing. Boy. Well, my father played golf, anything with two hands, he was left-handed. So he played golf left-handed, batted a ball left-handed. But everything else was right-handed. So I I guess I got that from him. So when I see him, I'll tell him. (laughs) (laughs) You mentioned fields, and that made me think of something. At some point in the past, you've told me that Mm -hmm. you you had taken a job as a model. No. Not there, at Carson's in Peoria. Carson's in Peoria. Okay, when was that? Uh, after the war. Let's see, Lori was in college. And uh, so that would be have to be, when was he in college? 46? 46. So you were living in Peoria? Yeah, yeah. And you got a job at Carson's as a model. I got a, it wasn't a job. It was whenever they needed models, they would call us. And so it might be once a month or, you know, every, with summer clothes, we did so, did the summer clothes. Was and it just like a, like a seasonal show kind mm-hmm. of thing? That's all it was. Okay. Yeah, I think I only did that twice or three times. Okay. And uh, so she, uh, and then, well, I was, uh, I know what you're thinking. In Merced, John Powers is the model that, that they had models and they were, very famous in New York. And one of the girls came, then she talked to the colonel and his wife. He, he wanted to pick out different ones. Uh, uh, maybe they would come to New York and be models. And so she was looking for certain types. And uh, so I said, well, the, the, we got a letter ordered. That's why I could never be in the service. No one's going to order me around. And... Uh, <laughs> And it said I had to be here at such and such a time. So I told Lori about it. I said, I'm, I'm pregnant. You couldn't see yet with, with Pat. And he says, oh, go. I don't want anything on my 201 file. So I went, and they, she picked me because I was very thin, very straight. And they could pad me, and I, and I was modeling suits. Huh. So uh, she wanted me in New York. She, because very few people, they had either hips, and I didn't have hips either. Hmm. And uh, I got no, hips you with... You weren't a hippie. No. <laughs> so uh, I said, no, I don't want to go. I said, my, my husband's here. He, she says, well, he'll be going overseas. And she was telling us girls she picked. Uh-huh. And uh, we said, well, no, we're going to stay with them until they go overseas. And um, well, she was disappointed and a little mad. And uh, so that was it. That was all it that was. I, I uh, did modeling they, for the people in Merced. It was for the townspeople to come and see what they had. But uh, so that was it. Okay. That reminded me of something else. You told me that uh, before Pat was born, mm-hmm. my grandfather decided he knew it was a girl. And he picked a name. Or something like that. That that was uh, no, that was Lori. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He uh, decided that she's going to be Patsy Ann, and uh, someone would tell us we'd be in the officers' club or something, and someone would say, "Hey, how's your wife doing? She and Patsy Ann are doing fine." <laughs> and <laughs> so I said, "Don't keep saying that. Could be a boy. No, it's not." So the girls in our squadron gave me a shower, all girls stuff. 
And I thought, what am I going to do if it's a boy? Now, how early did he decide it was a girl? He did, as soon as I told him I was going to have a baby. Really? Yeah. He said, good. <laughs> he said, and it's going to be a girl. So, and it was, thank heavens. Now, how did he pick the name Patsy? Uh, I was telling him when I was uh, I grew up, I had a doll about so big, mm -hmm. and... Um, Bigger than me at the first, mm. and, the, and it was, and I called it Patsy Ann, and so he says I like that name, and in uh, so when I told him I was pregnant, he says, "Good, we're going to have a Patsy Ann," and I says, "That that was my doll's name," and he says, "Yeah, and I like it," so, <laughs> so then I uh, then uh, when I was pregnant with Janice, I thought, "Oh no, I'm going to go through this again." <laughs> <laughs> so I waited until I started this show, and I said, oh, by the way, we're going to have another baby. Uh -huh. And he says, great, now let me see. I said, oh, no. It's good. If it's a girl, it's a girl. If it's a boy, it's a boy. He says, well, of course. I mean, this time it was okay. <laughs> <sighs> well, he didn't know that second time, apparently. Oh, and we had another girl. So. Now, how did you decide on the name Janice? Uh, I don't know. Well, we looked at a book that with all the names, and he okay. thought that was nice. We we had seven girls. Yeah. F figure that one out. Yeah, he had seven girls, I no boys. <laughs> I have one. I have one. one girl, and I'm glad I still have my hair because oh. I have more. It's more gray than it was when she was born, and I blame her for it. Well, I, I had, can't imagine seven. I had three children in three years, so I had my hands full. That's quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, it. Uh, okay, so wait, it, hold on. But but Pat was named after a doll you had as a kid. Mm -hmm. My mother, you looked in a book of baby names and just picked well, one. Well, he, yeah, and then okay. uh, Marie, his uh, favorite aunt was Aunt Marie. Uh, his, she's in there. Okay. But I'm, and so he said, let's make the, the middle aunt. I said, that's pretty, yeah. So that's what we did. And uh, so when we had Tom, I had the name Curtis and. Different odd names, you know, and um, so, so he comes in, he says, uh, uh, what are we supposed to give the name for the, but the baby? Just, I said, I don't know. And uh, so with that, the phone rings. Mm -hmm. He picks it up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Thomas Arthur. And I hung up. I said, what was that? He said, oh, that's the baby's name. <laughs> <sighs> I said, Tom, I like that. I said, okay. And Arthur was, he knew it had to be Arthur because that was after my dad and my uh, brother. Right. So, uh, so he Arthur. named him. And I named uh, Dee Dee. And, um, now, is it, is it after the Uncle Roger's daughter or is it just coincidence? No, it was just, uh, I, I named her, my mother was very depressed because we lost my dad. Huh. And so I thought, well, I'll name the baby. I hate the name Dorothy. Excuse me, but I do. That's and okay. so uh, I, I thought, I'll name her Dorothy. So I did. And um, so, but I didn't like the name. So I thought, what can I call her? Then I thought of Dee Dee down there. I thought, oh, Dorothy. Dee -Dee. Yeah, I wanted Dee Dee. So that's what, what we called her. Well, what was her middle name? Um, what did I name her? Dorothy. Dorothy Jane. So she would have been DJ, mm -hmm. but you called her DD. Yeah. So. Okay. So. And. All right. Well, while I'm making that down, so when was Dee born? What year was that? Uh, she was born in April. Eighth. No. When a tenth? April tenth, nineteen fifty-two. Your mother was 52. born April 8th, 1943. 45, rather. All right, so Dee Dee's name on her birth certificate was Dorothy, mm -hmm. after your mother. Mm -hmm. But you always called her Dee Dee. Yeah. Got it. Mm -hmm. That's So that's 52. When was Larry born? He was 50... Uh, let's see, he was born in um, March. March 23rd. Or is it 24th? I have to look at the calendar. I think it's the 24th. Um, 19... 59. Wow. Okay, so... 
Your first child, Pat, is born in 43. Mm -hmm. Larry's born in 59. Mm -hmm. 15 years difference. Yeah, I was going to say, that's quite a span. Mm -hmm. Now, my grandfather was Lawrence. Did anyone ever call him Larry? No. My mother-in-law always called him, all the boys, full names. Gilbert, Lawrence, and Raymond. Okay. And... um, his the the kids he hung around with called him Lori, okay. But at the office they called him Larry, and I was glad okay. it was Lori because then uh, Larry was born, and this way if someone said I'd like to talk to Larry, uh, we knew it was Lori. It was him. It was, oh, was, was, uh, I had those son. moments. It was some Christmas event. I answered the phone and they asked for Larry, and I'm like, all right. I've got my grandfather, my father, my brother, and my uncle. You're going to have to be more specific. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there was uh, Larry Crippen, Larry John Crippen. That's Ray's son. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And then there's Larry, uh, Eugene Crippen, my son. And then, of course, Lori, uh-huh. Stuart Crippen. And uh, three Crippens, three Larrys. Now, why did you name Larry Larry instead of also naming him Lawrence? It, no, it is Lawrence. Oh, but, is it? But we, yeah, it's Lawrence, it's Lawrence uh, Eugene, but we call him Larry. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, wait, but my father was legally just Larry, wasn't he? Like my brother, too. Um, I think both of them are, are, are I think legally he was just Larry. Larry Grant, wasn't he? Yeah. I think so. And he named uh, Grant after him. Okay, so but my grandfather and uncle are both Lawrence, technically, mm-hmm. legally speaking. Okay, that I didn't know. Okay. Man, okay, so that's uh, Pat, Jan, Tom, Dorothy, Larry. Okay. Wow, that takes us almost to 1960. That's mm-hmm. quite a bit. Yeah. All right, well, you need to get to lunch, and I need to get to my next appointment, but... Uh, Okay. Next week, if next week is good for you, we'll have to go over some of the 1940s there, because now that we've got everybody figured out, yeah, you got to tell me all the stories they don't want to hear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, Pat sent me an email. She said, it's nice you're, you're getting stories from Mom. I hope you don't find any skeletons. And I went, it depends on how well-behaved you kids were. 